What's up guys, it's Neil from Acute Gaming and today I'll be going over some more PHP object oriented programming for the third time because I can't shoot a video without making a mistake apparently. Uh, yeah, now today's lesson is going to be a little different in that instead of just talking about OOP and the kind of stuff that's possible with it, we're actually going to be making a class that will connect to a database. And this is actually a pretty good use for object oriented programming because it, connecting to a database is code that we're going to be using quite a bit if you're working on a big PHP project. It's something you're going to be using on most if not every page. So it's just good to have it stored in a class so you can use it over and over without having to rewrite it for every file. Um, so yeah, I've made our class. I've called it database. You can call it whatever you like. Uh, it's just personal preference of mine to call it database so that it's easily identifiable if that's actually a word. But yeah, it's easy to see that this is the class for connecting to our database. And yeah, so first thing we're going to want to do inside our class is create three private properties. Host, username, and password. And these are going to be used for connecting to our database a little later on in the script. But for now we have to make our uh, constructor, yes that's the word I'm looking for, public function construct and if you're not sure what I'm doing you can take a look at my last tutorial I think it is where I go over constructors and their uses, how you can use them, things like that but yeah our constructor is going to take the parameter I host, it's going to take the parameter I username and the third parameter will be I password if I can move my screen capture over there we go, I password. And yeah, inside our constructor, we're just going to want to take the parameters for our constructor and assign them to our private variables. Um, if you're not sure what I'm talking about, we're just going to make this host equal to I host. And this is just taking the value of our parameter I host and assigning it to this variable right here, private host. And we're going to want to do that for username too. Username equals my username, as well as this password equals I password. So yeah, that just takes the variables of our, uh, that takes the, uh, what am I talking about? It takes the uh, parameters for our constructor and assigns them to these private variables right here. So yeah, that's our constructor finished, I think. So we'll go on to our second method, which will be called connect. And it's not going to take any parameters. And at this part of the tutorial, I'm just going to assume you already know some basic MySQL. But yeah, I'm just going to use the MySQL connect function to connect to our database. And we're going to have a connect using the parameters host not host, this host, I should say, this username, and this password. And this should just take uh, the MySQL connect function and give it the parameters, uh, this host, this username, and this password, which should let us connect using the uh, these variables right here, which we can assign in, a con in our constructor. So it's a little confusing it's a bit of a confusing concept but yeah it pretty much takes the value of our constructor parameters assigns them to these variables right here and connects to the database using those variables if that makes sense at all uh, yeah it's a little confusing but uh, with a little practice I'm sure you'll get onto it and below that we're going to use the or die um, function which will allow us to kill the script if this connection doesn't uh, succeed as it should. So uh, we'll have it or die. There was a problem connecting. Okay, so if there's an error, it's just going to tell us. It's going to kill the whole script and just say there was a problem connecting. So yeah, that should be our connect function over and done with. And now we can create our final method or function whatever you want to call it and I'm going to call this chain DB which is just going to allow us to change the database that we're currently using and it'll take one parameter and that'll be the database name 
which I'm just going to store in a variable called database. So yeah, this should just use the MySQL select db function, which allows us to select the database we want to use, and we're going to select database, which is the the uh, parameter for this function. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to give this or die also actually, just to keep our script well written. There was a problem selecting the database. So yeah, now if this gives us an error, it's going to say there was a problem selecting the database, and it's going to kill the whole script. The script isn't going to continue if there's an error, it's just going to stop it. So I think that should be our database class finished. Sorry if it's been a little hard to explain some of the concepts here, but hopefully you'll understand it a little better now when we actually put it to use. So uh, the first thing we have to do outside of our class is create a new instance of our class. And I'm going to call our instance database. Again, you can call it whatever you like. It's just a personal preference of mine. And it's going to create a new database. And we have to give it the parameters I host, I username, and I password because those are the parameters of our constructor. So I'm going to give it the parameters localhost because that's the host of my database. Um, username new and password password. And no, this is not my usual uh, database connection uh, credentials, I guess is the word. Uh, I just created this new user for the purpose of this tutorial, so yeah, I have better passwords than password, obviously. <clears throat> yeah, now uh, we can just use the function database connect now that we have a instance of our database class, and it should connect to our database theoretically as we have written it to right up here. And finally, we should be able to change db and I'm going to change it to and I'm going to change it to rdelf which is a database I have in mysql right now but yeah yours is probably going to be called something different uh, but yeah that's just what mine's called so yeah if I save this and go into firefox I don't think we should have an error if I refresh yeah no errors which should mean that this has run properly, but just in case, I'm going to make this echo out some text. Um, the database was successfully chosen, line break, semicolon, and up here I'm going to make it print out some text as well, just to make sure things are working correctly. Uh, the database was successfully connected, line break, semicolon. Now if we save and go into Firefox and refresh, there you go. The database was successfully connected and the database was successfully chosen. So yeah, that's my tutorial on, well it's not really a tutorial, it's more of an example on what OOP can actually be used for. So yeah, subscribe if you have any questions, comment, send me a message. Yeah, uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.